Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Uh, my name is David here at IP Quality Score, and um, today we're going to go over the email verification API. And uh, in addition to being an API, we can also clean lists. So if you have a batch file of email addresses, um, we can also run those through our mass check CSV system. So uh, let's just start there and we'll get right into it. So here you can download a sample file um, just to view the format, but it's basically all email addresses in the first column. Um, you'd go ahead and just select your address list here. And uh, we recommend doing a medium or hard um, check on emails since you know CSVs are gonna process um, in a multi-threaded manner. We're gonna power through this list, so you might as well go for the um, strictest results. Um, if you did want to see your results, so you can go ahead and um, click on one of your previous history items there. Um, it would take you to a quick summary, so you can see, you know, how many emails were checked, uh, how many were valid, 90%, pretty good, only 10% invalid. Um, this is a pretty clean list, so we don't have too many disposable emails. Um, most of these are personal email addresses, so they're on a common email domain, you know, pretty much not a business domain, something like Gmail or Yahoo. Um, there's a few suspect results. We'll go over more of these details um, as we get into the documentation, but uh, a suspect result is basically a catch-all domain. Um, we didn't find any fraudulent emails, so that's good, and there are 11 honeypot emails, and these would basically be like spam traps or, you know, things you would want to avoid for mass marketing or mass emailing. Um, if you wanted to download the results here, you would get a lot more data. So it's not just uh, these columns, you're getting every aspect of our API output. Um, you can also view these in a report, um, which we'll get into later. Um, here, actually, I'll show you a report real quick of what we've pulled for today. Um, so we'll run our stats for today. And um, as you can see, we actually have a recent abuse IP here. So this is a bad email. Um, it is valid though, it's just we've seen fraud from it on our network. Um, we've marked the deliverability low there. You really only want to be delivering to high emails that are completely valid. Um, this one is also going to be marked as a honeypot, so we've also detected that it has been acting as a honeypot. Um, these are common domains. Uh, you know, IP quality score is not a common mail service provider. So as you can see, that is marked as false. All these emails are marked as valid. Um, you guys, you can also check additional things. So if you wanted to export the results here, it's only gonna do what's available in the columns that are showing. So if you want to export results, you can go ahead and select more data here. So we'll go ahead and add an, an additional column here to see if it's generic. So these are generic accounts. You know, these are role-based accounts, support at, demo at, you know, sales at, webmaster at, things like that would be a generic account. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation. Oh, one more thing as well. You guys can also search for, if you do have your custom variables here, I don't have data entered right now, but um, it is possible to pass as custom tracking data. So if you wanted to pass a user ID with a request, um, or any other variables here. You can adjust these on your account settings, but you could view this data in the table here if you had it selected. You can also search by something. So if you wanted to search by a user ID and ID 20 or something like that, you can go ahead and search by it. I don't have any data loaded, so it's not going to load, but that's the way you would do it. Um, if you did, if you were using our conversion tracking, you, you can also adjust these settings here. You can also select a CSV report if you wanted to select, or you know, view res all results for a certain CSV. And um, you know, if you're viewing a large list, you might want to go ahead and just update this to 500 per page, so you can see as many results as possible. Um, let's get into the documentation a little bit. This is a little bit more technical aspect of it, but um, we do encourage real-time API scoring. You know, especially if you're capturing emails on a sign-up page, on an account creation, anything like that, you want to make sure that you're getting the real user's email address. Oftentimes, they're going to use a throwaway email service. They might just make up some gibberish, which might actually be valid. You know, so it's hard to, you know, it can be hard to verify these on on your own. So you really want to use a service to verify emails in real time. If you're not capturing the user's real email at you know account sign-up. 
you're not going to be able to monetize them later on or engage them. So this really does help your, your user value, your site's value. You always want to make sure you can reach out to contacts. Um, so this would be your, your base API key, and these would be your base request URLs. Um, you'll go ahead and use this key anytime you're making a requ request to our API system. Um, we do support JSON and XML, so you can choose your favorite format there. Um, here's a quick way to get set up. So if you wanted to check an email, you can go ahead and just enter any email address at the end here. Uh, make sure this is URL encoded. So if you are going to pass, if you are going to test this in your browser or not URL encode it and pass a weird symbol, it might throw an error. So just make sure the email address is always URL encoded. We do have examples below um, that we'll get to, which will automatically do that. Um, you can pass additional settings here, which we'll get into in a moment. But the timeout setting basically expands how long we'll wait to hear back from the SMTP server for SMTP verification. The default is seven seconds. Um, if you are using this in real time where a user is waiting to get you know, a success message or error, you don't really want to increase this too much. But if you're running this in the back end of your system or a cron job or something like that, you're going to want to go and use the maximum amount or maybe even 20 or 40, you know, something a little bit higher than seven. Um, it does increase the accuracy of emails, especially for business emails and, and private mail servers. You know, if it's a Gmail account, you're going to get an instant result back. But um, for some of the, you know, private mail servers, they can take a while to respond to SMTP verification. Um, this is some example output that you would get with JSON. Um, we'll get into these fields below. And if you were using XML, it would look something like this. Um, here are some error um, examples. So if your account was out of credits, you would get something like this where you have insufficient credits to make this query. Um, or if the email address was formatted weirdly, uh, you would receive this message. But usually when it's formatted incorrectly, we're going to tell you that it's just invalid because the user could be passing it like that. Um, so here's the settings that you can pass with the API request. Um, like we talked about or above, you can pass the timeout, which the default is seven seconds. So if you're not specifying it, it will be seven. Um, I wouldn't really recommend going lower than that. You can if you want to try to be faster, but um, increasing this value will help with accuracy. It also depends how you're analyzing the results. Um, so we do let you know, let's say this, that the email did time out while attempting verification on the, de the default setting of seven seconds, the timed out variable will be true on the API results. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit, but I just wanted to point out that we do let you know if the email timed out during verification. Um, so here's the fields and um, you know, quickly overall, you're going to want to check if it's valid or not. Obviously, if it's not valid, you can kind of just skip over it and you don't need to look at other data points. But um, so that, that's a quick overview and probably the most important one right there. Um, but we'll also let you know if it's a disposable email, you know, throwaway services like Yacht Mail, Gorilla Mail, Shark Lasers, all those, you know, they're, they're used by users with bad intentions. So they're most likely creating duplicate accounts. They're going to try to, you know, do some type of fraudulent behavior. You really don't want any disposable emails. You can engage those users later on. So if it's, if it's a disposable email, you really want to you know show an error to the user to have them enter a valid email or just block them completely. Um, like we talked about before, if, it does, if the email does time out during SMTP verification, we will let you know with the timed out variable. Um, so maybe valid will be false, but timed out will be true. Um, in the PHP example we'll get to below, you'll see that we have an option for that. So you might not want to consider a, a result as a result that's invalid as accurate if timed out is true. Um, we'll show you some more below so that will make more sense as we go through this. Um, deliverability can be anywhere from low, medium, or high. You know, if you're doing mass mail marketing or, you know, just doing a newsletter or emailing your users, you really want to look for the high email so that you're reaching their inbox and not their spam box. And there's a good chance that the emails are active. Um, for suspect, we're going to let you know if it's a catch all domain. So certain emails will return valid during SMTP verification, no matter what you do, they're going to say that the email is valid. 
Um, we're gonna let you know when that happens, when an email server is, is accepting all emails that are tested against it. So you may not wanna mass mail emails that are marked as suspect, it's really up to you, but we're, we just like to give you as much data as possible, so we're gonna provide that that for you and you know you can handle it as you see fit usually these emails are valid it's just very hard to um, you know detect for sure that they're valid until you've sent that email we do have workarounds in place for some servers that are catch-alls especially the popular mail servers um, so we, we do try our best to verify them but some email mail providers it's just not possible to verify that the emails exist um, we're also going to give you a quick some quick scores here. So this is kind of the you know how healthy the SMTP server is. Um, most likely suspect will be true if you know the score is one or two. Suspect will probably be true here. Um, three you know is great because you know it's not a catch-all domain and it's the inbox exists, so it's definitely a valid email. Um, kind of something similar for the overall score. You know we're going to check that DNS is valid. If the email address doesn't have valid DNS, that's a very bad sign. Also, if the mail server can't be you know, reached, that's not a good sign as well. Um, we're gonna try to extract the first name. It's not always possible, but we'll do our best. It will say unknown if we don't know the first name. Um, we'll also return corporate if it's a generic email, such as you know, webmaster at, sales at, support at, something generic like that. So we'll just return corporate for the domain. Um, common is, is an interesting one because some users like to only accept business emails and not personal emails or vice versa. Um, with a common field, we'll let you know if it's from a common mail provider. So is it from a, a service like Gmail or Yahoo or Yandex or Tuda or any of those types of services, we'll let you know if it's a common mail provider. So this is kind of a good way to filter out, you know, which users are business um, or you know who's signing up from an individual account um, generic kind of like we talked about above um, this would be for a generic or role-based account so if it's you know webmaster at support at anything like that we're gonna go ahead and mark it as a generic account this should help you filter emails too, to or accounts just to see the quality of users on your end um, you can go ahead and find those individuals that signed up and not not just some generic email um, DNS valid you know it's always good that there's actual DNS settings on the mail server domain um, so you want to make sure those are in place um, you know honeypot is an interesting one as well because we're gonna let you know if the email is a spam trap um, it's not possible for any service to detect these with hundred percent accuracy but we will always do our best to catch the newest and most active spam traps that are, you know, currently active. Um, you do, would not want to mass mail any of the emails that are on that are marked as true as Honeypot. Um, that would kind of reduce your sender score and you know cause more of your email to go to spam. Um, recent abuse is really great for users that are having problems with duplicate accounts or just fraud in general. We'll go ahead and search our database for emails that have engaged in fraud over the past few weeks or months, or even you know within the past few days. And we'll, you know, if if, an, if we're seeing an email address that's you know constantly being involved in suspicious activity, we're going to let you know. We don't want you to be accepting accounts or any business. You know, you could be accepting transactions online. We want to make sure that you have all the data on your end to make a good decision about the user. So. You know, when you see recent abuse as true, you really want to be careful with this user. You might want to flag them on your end or require, you know, additional verification from them. Uh, the request ID is another interesting field. This is if you're sending postbacks and conversion notices to our server, or you're going to do some type of API request to our server later on for this request. Um, it's easiest to identify the lookup by the request ID as this is a unique ID. Um, we'll discuss this a little bit below as well. And then the other variables here are really just, you know, basic API variables tells you if the request was successful or if there were any errors. Um, here's a really good example for PHP. So you can put this on your site and get started in just a few minutes, much faster than watching this video. So um, this is just some example code and you can modify it as you'd like. Um, you can adjust the timeout here. Um, you can also, if you want to make this a fast test, you can go ahead and set the setting to true. Now, the fast test will skip SMTP verification, 
So we will only do a, a, you know some syntax checks, a DNS check, um, if it's a disposable email, if it's had recent abuse, things like that. So we don't really recommend fast unless you really need results super fast. Um, otherwise, it's best just to limit the timeout to maybe like three or five seconds and you know let it run naturally. It's not always going to, you know, if it's set to seven seconds, it doesn't mean it's going to hit seven seconds anytime. That's just the maximum allowed for the system to wait to verify the email. Um, going a little farther down here, you do have a, a few other options as well. So we can allow timed out emails. We don't necessarily say that timed out emails are bad. It's just a matter of how long you want to wait for some service to verify. Like some business service can take 40 seconds to verify an email. And there's nothing you can do to speed that up. That's just the way it works. So um, we don't recommend necessarily blocking those emails. So that's that's a default value of true here. Um, this one could be marked as true or, or false. It's really up to you how, how you want to handle recent abuse emails. Um, you know, it's not really good to, to accept accounts from them. Um, if, if they're ending up on this list, you know, it's pretty bad. They've, they've definitely done something pretty bad and pretty recent. Um, so here's just some quick logic that will power through that, power through the result, and then filter it based on this data, and then we'll let you know if it's valid or not. So you can just throw your email that you want to check in here, and you know it will quickly you know run with all the tests above, and your API key is already already inserted into this example. And then uh, you know if you do want to pass some conversion notices to us, um, you can let us know when this email or account has you know converted from a normal user into a conversion. Um, you can go ahead here and just, you know, the request ID is really the best way to let us know. Um, so you would record that on the initial lookup and then just, you know, use your postback URL to pass that data back to us. You can also, if you're passing custom tracking data like a user ID, transaction ID, you can go ahead and attach that to your postback here. And we'll go ahead and just search by the most recent transaction or the most recent lookup for this transaction ID. This was user ID equals one, two, three. We did look for the most recent lookup by user ID one, two, three on your account. And the post back here would pull that data for that lookup. Um, Postbacks allow you just to pass, you can you know update the conversion status. So this one will be marked as converted or you can you know pass a little bit other details to us here. Um, so that's a quick overview of everything. Um, if you ever need help with adjusting your settings or you have any questions about the API, uh, feel free to let us know. You can always create a support ticket here or reach us on live chat. Um, you can also call us at our number. We're always available and we want to make sure you guys have the best settings optimized for your account so you're getting the best results. Um, we're also constantly improving our API so we want to make sure it's the most accurate. We're keeping an eye on you know new domains that pop up or you know all the major email services so that we're staying up to date with any changes that they make um, so the service really is great it's a lot cheaper than other services out there but it's also providing greater accuracy so I hope you enjoy it I hope you can fully test it um, all demo accounts do have 5,000 free credits per month so that's a pretty generous amount you know for you to, to go ahead and you know test the API test the list out get a good feel for the system so thanks for joining me today.